In this video, I'm going to give you a complete tutorial how you can build your very own modern desk lamp using simple hand tools. Along the back side of the lamp, you have the power switch and you also have a power inlet that lets you easily detach the power cord from the lamp. Easily adjust the light angle by tilting the head up and down. Integrate LEDs and tight miter joints. Simply plug the power cord in and you're now able to turn the light on and off from the power switch. And last but not least, a 9 inch concrete base. And be sure to check the video description to find all the materials that I use for this project. For this build, I'm going to use a large vase that I had hanging around and also I'm going to use some metal flashing which I will use as my form. I found this metal flashing at my local hardware store. It was in the construction section. Since the vase I'm using was round, I used that as a template, taped that off and that held the form together. The flashing is not strong enough to keep form by itself so I'm going to use the vase, put plastic on top of that and put the form back on. I drew a line on the form on the inside just to give me an idea on the general thickness. In this case, I don't have an exact height but this is about an inch thick. I normally keep my cement mix and my sand in a bucket, especially the ones I use for small projects. Now the mix I'm using here is a 2 to 1 ratio. It's 1 cup of cement mix and 2 cups of sand. I do believe any cement mix should work just fine for this project. You'll want your mix to have a consistency such as this one. Now I've never used cooking oil to spray down a concrete form but in this case you guys suggested it so I'm going to give it a shot and see how that works out. Now my mix is ready it's time to add that inside the form. Applying vibration to the form will help the cement sit flat and also help remove the air pockets. Now to add support to the form I'm going to use a construction wire mesh. Bending over the sharp edges would have been a good idea. I did not do that and it actually ruined my form and I'll show you what I mean later on in the video. Now just vibrate and shake this form around and you'll see all the air pockets will start rising to the surface just like this. I let the form sit for approximately two and a half days and that should have been enough time for a one inch thick form to cure. So I thought that this was going to be super easy to remove and that was not the case here. I really had to go get my gloves and apply some pressure to this. I'm not sure what happened, but it was tough. Now right after removing the form, I realized what happened. The form, as I stated before, had some imperfection in it and that was due to the metal piece that I put inside the form. The sharp edges pierced the plastic and that allowed the concrete to get stuck to the base. Now I'll eventually remake this because I cannot live with the way it is right now. I don't want to hold up the project so I'm going to continue and this part should be easy to remake. My sanding process went a little something like this. I used 60 grit to knock off the rough edges then I used 120 to smooth that out even more and then I used a 400 grit sandpaper to smooth it out even further. Now I want the lamp to sit at an angle so I'm going to make a 22 degree cut along the bottom and that should give me a lean on the lamp. In order to make all my cuts, I'm going to use this miter box and I pre-marked the cut before I made the cut just so I didn't confuse myself and made a bad cut. The cut I'm making will be for the body of the lamp and these two pieces will be glued together. That's why I'm making the cut together so that everything is perfectly aligned. Now in order to not make a mistake, I have to think ahead and in this case I know that I will have a bolt going through the base of the concrete and into the wood. So I have to watch my placement for these components. Now since I'm drilling a round hole, I applied painters tape and this will help me drill a clean hole. And the hole I'm drilling is for the power inlet. Now drill the hole deep enough for the inlet to go in and also some spare room behind it for wire storage. Now just to clarify where I'm at in the project, I'm using the same two pieces of wood. They're just clamped together so this is not one piece of wood. Now to cut out the hole for the power switch, I'm not going to use tape here because I wanted to see exactly where I'm going. So instead of doing that, I'm going to use a razor to cut the outer perimeter of the hole and this would help me not get the split from the drill bit. Use a small chisel to carefully open up the hole. Now you also want to go deeper than the depth of the switch to allow for wire storage. Chiseling out the hole can take some time so once that's figured out and you got the hole to the right opening, now we're going to move on to the next part. Now when I sketched this lamp up, the design called for the wire to come out the back side of the lamp and then over the top and into the lamp. But once I started working on the lamp, I eventually changed that. Now with the clamps off, I'm going to draw a line from 
the opening that I made for the wire and then all the way down to the two components. Now after I traced out the channel, I want to make sure that this channel is wide enough for the wire to sit in. Next I'm going to take a razor and continuously score along the line and this should dig deeper and deeper into the wood and that would make it a whole lot easier to remove this channel. Again take a small chisel, use that to remove the middle section of the channel. Now if this process is not fast enough for you, just get a drill and a bit and then just drill it out as much as you can, remove as much as you can and then take the chisel to clean the hole out. Now the wire that I'm using to go in this channel is just a regular lamp cord that I cut a piece off of. Any wire should work just fine, this is just a 12 volt power supply. On the back side of the power inlet you have three prongs sticking off, two of them is your ground slash your negative and the other one is your positive leg. The black wire that I just soldered on, that would be your negative leg and I'm going to be switching the negative leg on and off on the light switch and that's how I'm going to be turning the light on and off. Since both conductor are the same color, I'm going to look for the one with the label on it and use this as my positive leg. Apply a little solder on the strands and this should keep them twisted together. Now solder the conductor onto the positive leg of the power inlet. Now strip the black wire and I'm going to install a quick disconnect connector. And like most cases, every time I need that tool, I can't seem to find it. Today it's the crimper. So I'm going to use my electrical cutters which have a crimping section on it. And that should work just fine. So the first leg of the wire that's attached to the power inlet now I'm on to the second leg. The second leg will be passed through the power switch. The power switch is like a gate. Once you flip it one way, the gate opens. Once you flip it the other way, the gate closes. Once the switch is in the on position, it allows the negative to pass through and then apply power to the light. Now had I thought about it at the time, I would have used heat shrink here to protect the wire from each other so nothing touch and short anything out, but in this case I used tape. Tape will work just fine, being that it's in this tight position and there's no way for the tape to unrattle. Now once you've glued all this back together, it would be almost impossible to take it back apart without redoing this from scratch, so I'm going to clamp it together and then test my circuit just to make sure that it works before continuing. Now using a meter in this case would be ideal to test the circuit just to make sure that there is not a short and also make sure that the switch works. If you don't have a meter, you can always just hook up the light and see if the light turns on. If it does, then move on to the next, and if it doesn't, just check your wiring. I used painter's tape to protect the connection from the wood glue. Then I applied wood glue on both sides of the wood right before sandwiching the two together. Now add clamps and tighten the clamps down as tight as possible because there will be no screws, there will be no nails, it just be wood glue to hold this thing together. And now I'm going to start working on the light panel. I'm going to cut 45 degree cuts on the two outer panels and then I cut 45 degree cut on a small scrap and then I'll use that scrap, place it on top of the two pieces that I previously cut. Then I'm going to use the scrap with the 45 degree cut, mark the thickness of the two pieces sandwiched together, then make the 45 cut on that mark and that should give me a tight miter. Now in this case I'm not going to move the camera so you guys can see that this is a real tight miter that you can get from a hand cut miter box. Now with the miter end being cut and I'm satisfied with the outcome of that, I'm going to mark the length of the light panel and then cut that down as well on the miter box. Now if I were using the miter box daily, I'd probably have this clamped down somewhere where it didn't move as much. Now I'm going to make one more cut for the top of the light box and also I'm going to make a smaller miter cut for the back panel on the light box and you'll see where this go in a minute. Now early on in the video, I did bring my wire out the back, but I should have brought it out the front. And if you remember the piece that I just cut, this is where it's going to go in the top part of the lamp, just to keep you on the same page with me. And even though I don't feel like this part is relevant to the project, I guess I'll just show this anyway, just in case you had a real life event where you needed to patch a hole on a piece of wood or something like that. So I'm going to show you what I did to pass the wire to the front side of the wood. Now I do know I will later need to drill a hole in this exact location so I gotta keep an eye on where I'm gonna pass that bolt through and make sure I don't put my wire in a bad place to get nick. So I'll drill a hole all the way through so that I can get the wire to pass through. Then I'll notch out a channel and this way I need to notch the channel out deep enough so when I bend the wire over it doesn't protrude to the top. 
and after the wire is passed through I can then cut a small piece of wood that will fit inside this opening. Now normally I would use wood filler to fill in the gaps going around the opening or in this case I'm going to show you how you can use sawdust to fill the hole in or you can cut a perfect hole which I didn't. Just apply a lot of glue, insert the small piece, grab a little bit of that sawdust that's hanging around, fill it in an area and mash it into place, take a wet rag and remove all the excessive glue. Now this will look a whole lot better if you put the grain in the same direction as the wood that you're filling in. I'm going to drill a hole here so I can pass the wire through. And I have a piece of plexiglass which was left over from other projects I was working on. I'm going to use that as the light cover. So I need the light cover to be the same width as far as the top part of the lamp. So in this case I'm going to use that piece of wood to trace out the light cover. Then I'm going to use the handsaw to cut the plexiglass. Now I've always used my table saw to cut plexiglass but in this case the handsaw worked just fine. Now I also cut two small pieces of wood to support the glass and back there where my finger is that's where I'm going to have my splice point for the light. So the plexiglass will not only act as a light cover but also as an access panel. To sit the plexiglass in place I'm going to pre-drill and countersink the head for the screws. In this case the screws will sit flush with the plexiglass. And to help conceal the LED some I'm going to add some frosting to the inside of the plexiglass. So keep in mind that I have the countersink part on the opposite side that I'm going to spray. Now after applying the frost it will appear that the glass is still clear but after a while and time goes on it will start to fog up. To make the light panel I'm going to use a strip of LED which comes on a roll. In this case I'm going to cut the light at the connection point and this is pretty standard on most LEDs. Now being that this is a custom lamp you can make this light panel as big or as small as you like. And for this setup I'm going to use four strips and if you notice I have the wire harness hanging out I need to notch out a piece of the wood that I'm using and that way it allows for the wire to pass underneath. Now before applying the LED strips I'm going to sand it down lightly with a 220 grit sandpaper. Make sure that's smooth and now attach the small piece of wood only on one end using wood glue. Now peel and stick the LEDs in place and I'm going to start with the two outer pieces first and then work my way to the middle. Next I need to wire each panel to each other using some small jumpers. Now dab a little solder on the connection point. On one end I'm going to have all my positive and on the opposite end here I'm going to have all my negatives. Now since the light strip to the right is bringing the power in I'm going to attach the negative from this side to the second panel and that should bring the negative all the way down to the bottom. Now I'm going to connect all the negative on this side. And since all my negative will be on the opposite side I'm going to put all my positive on this side and I'll tie those together. Now being that this is a two wire LED circuit it makes it pretty easy and self explanatory. You have positive and negative so attach all the positives together and all the negatives together. Now remember this piece of wood which I notched out earlier I'm going to use that to put that over the wire harness and then pass it to the back section of the light panel. So the light panel looks pretty good and I'm happy with it so far so it's time to glue it up and then attach all these pieces together. And like always don't forget to use a wet rag to remove all the glue squeeze out. 
and with two coats of the spray frost applied to the plexi I can still see the wire connection and the wire harness through the glass. So to fix that I'm going to use some black spray paint to spray paint the edge. Now keep in mind I'm keeping all my spray paint on the inside of the glass not on the outside so you won't be able to touch the spray paint. Now sand the wood down until it's smooth and I'm using 220 grit sandpaper. Now I don't have any plans of putting any stain on this wood. I actually like the color it is. So I'm just gonna apply a layer of polyurethane on it. And the way I came up on this piece of wood, there's a local window and door company pretty close to my house. And I just checked the trash can and I grabbed these scrap from that. And now to attach the lamp to the base of the wood, I found the center and I'll be drilling that using a masonry bit. And I showed you a larger bit just so you can get a closer look at what the masonry bit looks like. It's not a regular drill bit. This is meant to drill concrete. So I drill a small hole so that I can use something to mark the lamp body where I plan to pass the bolt through. So that something was a small drill bit. And I'm gonna use that to basically make a mark and that mark will tell me where I need to drill. Then I'm gonna take a quarter inch masonry bit to open up the center hole in the concrete base. And with the bolt passed through, I'm going to trace the angle of the bolt onto the body of the lamp. I'll also take a piece of painter's tape to mark where I need to stop while drilling. My initial plan was to use this quarter inch threaded insert, but in this case, I think the bolt can get screwed right into the wood and that should hold just fine. I try to keep the drill bit straight to the pencil marks. After screwing the threaded bolt into the wood, I was more than confident that this would work. And my choice of finish is a clear coat polyurethane satin finish. So for those who doesn't know, this is a wipe on polyurethane. You can actually get it in this can and you can use a rag to apply it versus using a spray or using a brush. And to put a finish on the concrete, I'm gonna use some spray lacquer that I had and just apply two coats of that and that should be it for the concrete base. Now attach the body of the lamp and the lamp head. Now find the center and drill a hole all the way through. Now it's always a good idea to have a piece of wood on the opposite side so you don't have any blow out while drilling through. Now on one side only, I'm going to drill down just enough to install a joint connector nut. Now install a bolt and connect the two. If you don't like the bolt being silver, you can always spray paint the bolt black and it should blend right in. Pass the wire through the hole previously drilled to connect the power wire. Now I did leave enough slack on the wire so that the lamp can be opened up all the way without an issue. I also added a zip tie so that the wire could not be pulled out for any reason. Now splice the positive wires and also the negative wires. I'm using heat shrink but in this case you can also use electrical tape or wire connectors. I will have a list of items that I used in this video down in the video description just in case you guys have any questions of what anything I'm using. You should be able to find all the links down in the video description. And now you can install the light cover. And to protect your surface from the concrete base, I'm going to use some cabinet bumpers. Now plug the lamp in and give it a test. And at this point, the lamp is complete. And I'm going to take a 400 grit sandpaper, lightly sand in the same direction as the grain, and then I'll apply the last layer of poly. 
I'm Glenn on DIY Creators and I love to hear what your thoughts are and do let me know if you want to see more projects like this one. And if you enjoyed this build, be sure to like, subscribe and don't forget to share. Thanks for watching guys.